In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to calculate a percentile rank. And so we're using this for a z-score. Remember, a z-score is pretty informative for us. And here's our formula here. And you remember that that tells us um, whether or not the score is above or below the mean. If it's a positive number, it's above the mean. If it's a negative number, it's below the mean. And how many standard uh, deviation units it is from the mean. But that in and of itself is, is sometimes it's not completely informative. And some of the information that we would want is the percentile rank. That's what a lot of people are interested in. How many, what percentage of people did my son or daughter score higher than or that, that I scored higher than? So here's an example here. So if you scored a 76 on an exam, what proportion of students scored less than you did? Or again, what is your percentile rank? And so uh, we've got our for Z formula here. So, so it, actually, I'll just plug in the numbers right up here. So 76. And then the, you notice the population mean in that class was 70. And the population standard deviation was 3. So now we're looking at 6 divided by 3 equals 2.00. So that's our Z score here. Our Z is um, 2.00. And so what we need to do is there's there are some tables in the back of your electronic textbook that we need to go through. So in that table, um, here's the, the, the table right here. It starts at page 228. And this is the, um, the, the normal unit table, or oftentimes called the Z distribution table. So you'll notice here in one column it has a z-score, and they're always just positive z-scores. So you have to think about it in that way. If you've got a negative z-score, um, I'll show you in a little bit how it is that we how we think about this. Then you've got the proportion of the body, and you've got the proportion of the tail. So you notice here a z-score of zero. Remember that's exactly at the mean. So 50% of the scores are going to be above the mean and 50% of the scores are going to be below the mean, right? Makes sense. That's what we see in a normal distribution. It's symmetrical. 50% of the scores are above the mean, 50% are below the mean. And then you notice it starts to switch here as the, the z-scores get a little bit larger, okay? So now we found a z-score of 2. So let's go, um, I'm going through here to find that z-score of 2. I found it here z-score of 2, and then the proportion of the body that goes with that is 0.9772. So I'll go back here. Part of it is got to figure out what do I want? Do I want the proportion of the body or do I want the proportion of the in the tail here? So what I like to do to, to figure this out is to draw a normal draw the a normal distribution. Now this is I'm doing this on a computer, so this is gonna this no, my normal distribution is gonna look horrible, and that doesn't matter actually. Yours can look ugly too, just like this one. Um, what matters is it helps us think about what percentage um, that we need. Do we need the proportion of the body, or do we need the proportion of the tail? So I draw this out. A z of zero is here. Um, a z of 2 would be about right here, right? That's our z of 2. So do I want the proportion that's in the tail over here, everybody who scored higher, or I want everybody who scored lower? I want everybody who scored lower. I want all of this down here. I want the proportion in the body, okay? So the, doing these drawings really can, can help you. It helps me a lot even still every, uh, when I use this to figure out, okay, which, do I want the proportion of the body or do I want the proportion of the tail? I want the proportion of the body uh, in, this, uh, in this table, and that's 0.9772. So 0.9772 would be our answer here for this. So that's a proportion roughly um, if this was you, you scored um, better than 98% of your, of your peers in the class. Okay, so how about the second part of this? How about if you scored a 67 instead of a, a, a 70? So we put 67 in here instead. Now we're looking at negative 3 in the numerator. So negative 3 
divided by 3, we've got negative 1 now. And so, so now I go back and draw my normal distribution. I draw this out. Right in the middle is 0, right? So I'll just pretend like that's right in the middle, OK? That's 0. And negative 1 would be roughly right here. By the way, we're just approximating things. So you don't have to get this exactly right of where things are at. We just want an image that, that helps us figure out, do we want the proportion of the body or the tail? So this score of 67 corresponds to a negative 1. And so we want all the people who scored down here is that the proportion of the body or the tail? That's actually the tail, right? Because that's a smaller proportion of this. So we go back to um, we go back here to the unit normal table, the z distribution. I find a z of one. So remember, we've got a negative one, but there's no negative numbers in this. In this, so we just think of it in terms of the absolute value of the z. So I've got a z of one. And I wanted the proportion in the tail. So the correct answer here would be 0.1587. So we go back here, 0.1587. Oops. Eight seven. So that's what the percentage is right in here. I scored roughly, or that person, I'm not going to say it's me, uh, that person scored uh, about the 16th percentile here. So I'm hoping these two examples give you a sense for this, for how to be able to figure out the percentile ranks. Uh, and, and so, and again, as always, if you have questions, feel free to, uh, to send me an email about, with those questions. Now let's look at a little different example related to the use of percentiles. And this is the type of thing that, that you will see in, in real world kind of applications here. So at Lewis Clark College, the mean SAT score of incoming students is 1205 with a standard deviation of 100. Actually, I don't know, but that, that's just our example for, for it for that institution. If a special honors program is limited to students who have an SAT scores that rank at the top 10% of the incoming class, what score will be used for admission to this program? Um, so this is a lot trickier compared to the other one, other problems that we had here for just straight up percentile ranks. So for this one, this formula doesn't work quite as well, right? This time, what we're trying to do is solve for x. We want a score. What SAT score will, re will be required for admission for the admission program? So now we're using this formula instead um, of using the z formula. We're solving for x for this particular example. So as we do that, our, we plug in our numbers. Our mean is uh, 1205 that we had for that. Our standard deviation is 100. And what we need to do now is figure out, um, uh, figure out the, the z-score here. And how would we, you know, you're trying to, you're looking at this, how are we figuring that out? Well, the information here helps us with that, the top 10%. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to go to this unit normal um, table, and instead of looking for the z-score first, we're going to look for the proportion in the tail, right? Because if we go back to, to this problem here, this example here, and uh, we plug in, here, but again, I'll, I'll draw a little better normal distribution this time. I'm getting a little better with this. Um, and so what, we're, what we want is the top 10% right here. So the proportion is point, the point one 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 zero excuse me, 1, 0, 0, or this, what's closest to that. We want this piece right here, OK? So proportion the tail point, we're going to look for the closest number we can get in the proportion of the tail to point one zero zero zero. So we look through this. Um, I think we've got our best one right here. And what corresponds to that is a z of 1.28. So that's the z that we're going to use to figure out what that cutoff value is. So 1.28 is our, is our z value that we're going to use here. Um, so we plug that in for our z, 1.28. So 
So we've got 1205 plus, um, and so here, plus 128, and so 105 plus 120, excuse me, 1205 plus 128 would give us uh, 1333 here. And you can plug that in the calculator if you're not completely sure that that's, that's what it would be if you add those up. But that would give us 1333. And so that's the SAT score that would be required for admission into that program, 1333. So I hope those three examples together help you with your, with your homework uh, for this week. And again, as always, if you have questions, um, feel free to send me an email. I'm happy to... Uh, to reply and help you out.